What's up guys? I got four, five, four and a half quick tips for you on designing lures in Fusion 360. Tip number one, use split body and rule fillets to create quick and dirty ribs. Check it out. So I have just a worm body here. I find this works best with worm bodies and I have two different um, side lines, straight lines and curved lines just to show you it works with both. What I'm gonna do is modify split body, select my worm, splitting tools. I'm going to select all of these and all of these and click okay. So now I have one bazillion little bodies here. Fusion doesn't like a lot of bodies, so it'll be a little slow. Then I'm going to go to fillet, rule fillet for my faces and features. I'm gonna select that split body radius i'm just gonna say one you know you play around and figure out what you want to do boom there we go click okay all done and then obviously we want to combine all of our bodies back together quick and dirty turn off that sketch and you're good to go pretty sweet all right tip number two we're gonna use the split face command to add details to our lure. In this one, I have a kind of more standard fish shaped lure and I've cut it in half because I find it works a lot better if you cut it in half and then just mirror it over at the end. And I have a sketch back here, which I just drew some wonderful details. We got eyes, we got a gill and a fin. You know, you do you bro. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use the split face command we're going to select this is our face and our first splitting tool is this little round guy right there. Now, if you're wondering why we didn't use split face in our previous example, when we use bodies is you can't select multiple splitting tools with split face like you can with split body. So I use split face for individual details and split body when I want to do a whole big honky thing. Okay. So now you'll see we have this face here. So quick and dirty, if I hit, hit a pipe, Click this. Now I have kind of an offset eyeball, if you will. If I wanted to make it um, around the eye, I could just do that. That's pretty cool, right? Makes it quick and easy. And you'll see that the difference here really, as opposed to drawing a circle and extruding it out, is it follows the contour of the body, right? If I was to just take a circle and extrude it out, it would just be a circle popping out there and it would be straight up and down on the plane. This follows the contour of the body. Pretty sweet. All right, now for our gills. This one gets a little more tricky, but again, we start off with splitting the face. Select that face, splitting tool is my little gill plate. Then we wanna do the offset face command. Select that face and then, then you just kind of have to wing it. Let's say 0.8 millimeters. And now you have this kind of face that again follows the contour. And that's the important part here. It's following the contour of my bait that you can then start to manipulate, right? Maybe put a fillet on it. Maybe, maybe 0.7. So you can do something like that. It makes a little bumpity bump bump thing, right? You can do that. Um, you could also click the move command choose faces, click this face, and now I can kind of twist it and move it and push it and pull it. And again, this gets really kind of, I just call it fidgety. You know, you have this kind of weird shape and when I clicked on the face, you know, it probably wasn't exactly in the center, but you know, you can just kind of get it a little flared out there and you're good to go. A little gill. And for the fin, it's very similar, but I'm gonna do a slightly different, show you a slightly different way to uh, go about it. So offset face here, this is 2.5 millimeters. And then when I move, so again, I want it to be a little, little cockeyed in there. I can just grab this, kind of swing it around. And we see we have a Y angle of negative 3.9. And then if I grab this, move it in, changing the Z and the Y distance at the same time. So you can actually go kind of type these in as you go. So if I want to just change the X angle, right? Negative 2.5, whatever, right? This is a little more fine grain way of moving things about. 
and um, make it a little bit simpler to deal with. And this, uh, this way has the advantage of not having extra bodies, right? I have an extra body on the eye because I made it a new body instead of joining it together. Uh, but you could obviously join it together if you wanted to. Um, but it's all one body, so you don't end up with a bunch of bodies strewn all over the place. And then at the end, you just mirror it up and you're good to go. So you can see here also that, uh, you know, the gill around this curve was a little more uh, fidgety than the uh, fin was on the more flat side. This technique I find works a bit better on, um, you know, the flat surfaces, flatter surfaces, as opposed to, um, you know, something that's going to curve across like that. But it still works. Tip number three. This one I call the smush. So I started off with a sketch that I revolved. And this is more for creature baits, um, things like that, which tend to be more, I guess, teardrop, flat teardrop shape, I guess you'd say. And I just drew a sketch here like that. I didn't even measure it because I'm a rebel. And then I revolved it and I ended up with this shape here. Okay, which cool shape, but not what I want for a creature bait. So all you do is go into modify scale and we're gonna select this body. And the point is very important. I continually messed up with this in the beginning. If you drew this uh, from the origin, right, which is this little dot right here, uh, the point we can select is actually that origin. And you can just come over here, open this origin, click on the O, and that's gonna pretty much get it from the middle, okay? And we want a non-uniform, so select non-uniform, and in this case, we want the Z scale, because we're gonna smush it basically top to bottom. And this um, scale is, you know, it's a decimal, so think of it as a percentage, right? So if I wanted to make it half as tall as it is wide, I just put in 0.5 here for half. And bingo, it's all smushed down. And there you go. And so you can see, I kept the original around here. It doesn't make it any wider. It only makes it um, less tall, right? It doesn't actually smush it out, keep the same mass, it just smashes it down. Quick and easy way to make a creature bait. And my last tip here is one that I've really been getting into recently because, um, you know, I kind of tallied up my resin bill for the year and it was insane. Tip number four, how to save resin when you're printing molds. This is more of like a mindset than it is a technique, but I realized when I was developing the trick fin, the WMBio.com by the way, that I didn't really need all this resin. And it really comes into play when you're talking about doing curl tails and you know creature baits, things with claws that go way outside the normal body. And so I just uh, stopped drawing squares. <laughs> you know, think about it that way. So you can see here when I drew this sketch, right, I have my rectangular outline and I just drew some curves in here, right, which are around my trick fin body and I threw in some circles here because I didn't need all that resin. Pretty simple, right? So don't just think about making it square because it's always square and it's super easy. If you're making a mold, I would say especially a, you know, kind of prototype mold that you don't expect on using a ton, just cut it all out. You don't need it, right? You can see um, here when we get to the end, still have plenty of room for all my alignment pin holes. Still got everything I need, right? And you can go even further by, uh, you know, putting fillets on all of these guys here, um, making sure that everything on the inside here, you put fillets. Just go crazy with the fillets, bro. Now, one thing I will recommend is, you know, you have a relatively flat square section to stick on your build plate when you're printing it, right? I could print it on this edge here. It might be okay this edge here probably would not be enough to hold up this whole mode mold as it's printing. Um, so just think about that as well as you're cutting out stuff. In this case, I wanted to print it on this set anyways, so it just worked. All right, tip number four and a half, five-ish. If you're working in one unit of measure and you wanna input another unit of measure, it's easy just to use the shorthand. This works best, I find, for millimeters to imperial, right? So I typically, if I'm in document settings here, I'm typically working in millimeters. But a lot of times, uh, my machine, my CNC machine in inches, or I think of a lot of lures in terms of inches, right? A six inch worm, an eight inch worm, et cetera. So it's super easy. If you're in here and you wanna do, hey, I need a six inch line for my six inch worm, Click here and just type in six and then the two little diddly dupers, whatever those are. Apostrophes, I don't know. You know, the symbol for inches. And then boom, and it automatically converts to metric and you keep on going. 
you can do that just about anywhere. Now, if you're in inches and you decide you want to do millimeters, very similar. If I click here, let's see I'm in inches, but if I just hit um, 60 mm, it's going to give you millimeters and then boom. CM for centimeters, M for meters, all that kind of good stuff. And away you go. Hope you guys found that useful. Here's a whole playlist of all my lure design videos so you can become a master lure designer in Fusion 360. Take care, tight lines. Do it. <laughs>